Anytime you're asked to graph anything in math class, you can always make an X and Y table of values. And that's pretty effective, but you guys, it takes all day. I understand. Like, I know it can be a real drag. That's why a lot of teachers make available these graphing calculators to their students. You might have one available to you. But even if you don't, I want to show you guys shortcuts for graphing parabolas that you can graph them without having to make the table of values. I'm going to demonstrate on this calculator so that you believe me, but you guys will be able to use these patterns, these shifting rules, not only in your algebra class, but in all of your upcoming math classes. So let's go ahead and look at the calculator. I'm not going to spend too much time showing you guys how to use the calculator. Hopefully you'll be learning that from your math teacher, but I do want to show you some really cool things about parabolas. First of all, let's look at our parent function y equals x squared. I just go ahead and type that in and I'm going to first show you what the table of values look like. The table of values, if you look here, these show me my x input values, these show me my y output values. And as I look through, I can see that as if I were to substitute in negative 3 and square it, I would get positive 9. Substitute in negative 2, square it, I get positive 4. That's the kind of idea that I'm working with with this function y equals x squared. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and show you guys how you can identify the vertex of a parabola by just looking at the table. Here's what I mean. To find the vertex, think about the place where your y values change direction. Look at our y values. They're going down, going down, going down. Then here they start going up, going up, going up. What that means is that this is the vertex of my parabola, the coordinates x for 0, y for 0. That's the vertex of my parabola. I can also tell using symmetry because this 1 shows up on both sides of the 0, the 4 shows up on both sides of the 9, that's symmetry. Let's look at the graph. If I look at the graph of y equals x squared, you can see it's a smooth, curvy parabola shape. Here's my vertex at 0, 0. It goes to the point 1, 1. 2, 4, blah, blah, blah. Oops, 2, 4 is like about there. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you guys get the general idea of what the graph of y equals x squared looks like. Anytime you're asked to graph an equation that involves an x squared, it's always going to have that same parabola shape. What I'm going to do is go into here and show you how to graph a few different equations at the same time, and we'll look at how they change when I stick in different numbers. Okay. So first I have my parent function, y equals x squared. I'm going to add another function in there. I'm going to add y equals x squared plus 2. And we're going to see what that looks like on the graph. I'm also going to add y equals x squared take away 3. Our computer is going to graph all three of those at the same time, and we'll talk about them as they show up. Okay. So before we look at the graph, I want to point out to you that x squared is going to show up as a bold line. Then we're going to see x squared plus 2, and then we're going to see x squared minus 3. There there was. That was pretty fast. Here's my x squared bold. This is x squared plus 2. This is x squared take away 3. Do you notice what the plus 2 and minus 3 did? It just moved the vertex. It moved it along the y-axis. The plus 2 took that exact same parabola shape, moved it up 2. The minus 3, same parabola shape, moved down 3. It looks like these guys are actually wider and skinnier, but they're not. It's hard to tell on this little screen, but all of these parabolas are equally wide or skinny. That's going to be important later. Okay, so now you guys can see that when I have a plusing number out here or a subtracted number, an added or subtracted number, it just moves the vertex along the y-axis. Let me show you something different. What would happen if I were to put those added or subtracted numbers inside parentheses, like this. I'm going to do x take away 2 inside the parentheses and then square it, thinking about the order of operations. I'll also try another one. I'll have x plus 3, x plus 3 inside the parentheses and then squared. Think about what that might do to our vertex. Let's look at the graph. Remember that x squared is going to show up as bold. Then we'll see x take away 2 quantity squared, and then we'll see the quantity x plus 3 squared. Okay, there's x squared. This is x take away 2, and that's x plus 3. It's weird, you guys. It's counterintuitive. Usually when we're adding numbers, that means on the graph it moves to the right. 
but in this case, we subtracted two. It's like the opposite. Usually we think subtracting two would move the vertex in this direction, but really subtracting two would move the vertex here. Be really careful with that. Same thing when I had plus three. Intuitively, I would think that would mean take my parabola, move the vertex three in this direction, but what happened was it moved three in this direction. That's something that's really tricky, that's hard to get the hold of. What I want you guys to remember from this video is that if it's inside the parentheses, it represents a horizontal shift. If my number was outside the parentheses, it represents a vertical shift. The last thing I want to show you before we move on is what would happen if I combined them. I'm going to try to do x take away 2 inside my parentheses and then square that and then I want a plus 3 at the end. Before I show you the graph, try to predict what that graph's going to mean. This minus 2 is going to represent something, the plus 3 is going to represent something else. Well, let me just tell you, before we look at the graph, how you could predict this. This minus 2 means my vertex is going to be moved 2 to the right. This plus 3 means my vertex is going to be moved up 3. Let's look at the graph so you guys believe me. There's my parent function. I moved my vertex over 2 and up 3. That's really cool, you guys. It might not sound cool right now, but when you get homework about graphing parabolas, you're going to think that's really cool. You don't have to make a table. You can just use these shifting rules. The minus 2 tells you a horizontal shift, but it's counterintuitive. The plus 3 tells you the vertical shift, up and down. So you guys, the last thing I want to leave you with is the table of values. Remember how we were looking at the vertexes? Let's look at the, let's try to find the vertex for my y2 function, which is the one that has the side to side and vertical movement. Remember when you're looking for the vertex in a table, you're looking for where your y values change from increasing and decreasing. Like look at my y's, getting smaller, getting smaller, getting smaller, uh oh, they start getting bigger, getting bigger again. That tells me this is my vertex. The coordinate 2, 3 is the vertex of that parabola. And I could tell from the table because it's where my y values changed direction. They were decreasing and then they started increasing. So guys, good luck with these. These shifting rules are important to start practicing now because they're going to show up in your future math classes. And more importantly, they make graphing a heck of a lot easier.